Let's take a look at how to create a drawing in Onshape. I've got my engine document open. I am currently looking at one of my part studios, the one for my crankshaft. To create a drawing of this, I will go to the plus sign at the bottom of the screen and then choose Create Drawing. And here we get a dialog box where we can choose what template we want to use. Right now it's on existing templates. If I choose Onshape, these are the ones that are provided by Onshape. You can see that we have all in here. You can also filter down to just the ANSI templates or the ISO templates. Besides that, you can also choose a custom template. And you can choose language, size, inches, projection. And if you want to include a border and the number of zones in there as well. But for simplicity, I am going to use one of Onshape's templates. I will use the ANSI B size and millimeters. Here we have, it can automatically start out with placing four different views on there or no views. I only have the choice for no views. So I will click the OK button. And now you can see my drawing is created. You can see the format and the zones and the title block at the bottom of the screen. And as soon as you start off your drawing, you are prompted to select the part or assembly that you want to make a drawing of. So for example, here I could go to assemblies. Here are my different part studios. It's recommended that you don't create a drawing of an, an entire part studio. That usually doesn't make sense. I'm going to select one of my parts that I have in its own part studio. When, then as I, as I move my mouse over the screen, you can see a preview of the drawing view that is going to be placed. From this drop down list, you can choose one of your different views. So for example, I could take a look at a top view. No, I don't like that. Let's take a look at a right view. I actually want it going from the other side. Let's change to a left view. And that is what I want. Over here from this drop down list, you could choose a predefined scale that you want to use instead. And I'll go with the suggestion of 1 to 8. And I will locate it on the sheet here and then left click to place it. And as soon as I do that, I'm automatically in a mode to create projection views. It assumes that I want to make at least one other projection view. And that is good. So let's make this top view over here. And I'm still in projection view mode. So if I want to create another one, I will click and then place the view over here. And that's good for my different views. If I'm done creating views, you can click on the projection view icon, or you could use the keyboard shortcut of P, or you could use the escape key. I'm not going to use escape because that will end up ending my video. Let's select this view and I'm going to reposition it and drag it. And you'll notice as soon as I drop this on the sheet over here, the locations of the other two views automatically update because those are different projection views. They have to be lined up with the view that they are based off of. And I want to create another view in the upper right hand corner for an isometric view. So to create a brand new view, we'll click on the insert view icon and we've got the same choices as before. If you have multiple models, you could change which one that you are using. Instead of the front view, I'm going to use an isometric view. And I want this to be at a smaller scale. So I'm going to go scroll down in this list over here to use a scale half as big as the original view, and then just drop this in the upper right hand corner. I'm done creating views, so again I can click on the icon to disable it. You could use the escape key instead. Now that I've got these different views placed on here, I could change the properties of a view. You can select a view and then hold down the right mouse button. And here we get some different choices in here. If you want to show the hidden lines, you can. Maybe I don't want to show the tangent edges, so I can choose hidden. That way it'll clean up the display of this main view over here. But I might want to display them in another view. And again, you can see that you have a lot of different choices. Oops, depend on the main view. You have a lot of different choices from the right mouse button when you want to change these different views. If you choose view properties, here you get a much larger dialog box, which has again the view orientation, 
the scale and the other different choices over the view display. I am going to create one more view in here and that view, let me hit the X to get out of there. I'm going to create a section view and for the section view, maybe I want to see sort of like the section view of the main lobe in here. So to create a section view, we're going to click on this icon over here and then for the section, I'm going to let it snap right into the middle over there and then place the view over here. And you can see that it automatically comes with hatching in there that you can change later on. I'm happy with these different views. Next up, I can start off with some supplemental geometry. And this set of icons over here allow you to throw in center lines, either using two points or different edges. You can also put in bolt circles. I don't have any bolt circles in here, so I won't use that. Or you can also put in center marks. So let's, oh yeah, and one other thing that you have in here is a virtual sharp to display the hypothetical intersection between some angled references. But for this one, I am just going to put in a center mark. Let's say I want to put in a center mark for this circle over there. That is good. And let's also throw in a center line. And for the center line, now let's use the edge to edge. And I can select this edge and this edge over here. You can see the preview of it on the screen. And then when I select it, I have the different drag handles that I can use to control how wide it is displayed on the computer screen. And let's position it about over there. So that is good for my supplemental geometry. Now let's throw in a few different dimensions on here. To create dimensions, we have the dimension icon and the keyboard shortcut is the letter D. There is a drop down list that you can use if you want to choose a specific kind of dimension, but for the most part, you can just use the regular dimension tool. And let's say I want to create a dimension from here to here. I will select that and place the dimension. Maybe I also want a dimension from here to here and place that one as well. And in this case over here, after I'm done creating the dimensions, let's get out of dimension mode. And I can click on the dimension and I can use the different controls over here to position where it's going to be displayed. And then maybe you want to move it back over here a little bit. There is a flyout, and if you click on that, that'll bring up a another menu that gives you other different additional choices. So for example, on the left side of the dimension, I want to have a diameter symbol so I can place that in there as well. If you want to add additional or excuse me, additional text to the right, you could use that in this cell over here. Let's do the same thing for this 120 dimension. I'm going to flip it to appear on the other side and then go to the flyout to add the phi symbol for diameter in there. And that is good. And then maybe reposition it a little bit or even drag it so that appears in the middle. And again, I can continue adjusting my different dimensions until I'm happy with the appearance. That's good for those couple of different dimensions in there. You can also create ordinate dimensions. So for example, I want a lot of dimensions indicating the locations of different entities. So in order to do that, we can create ordinate dimension. I'm going to start off by picking what I want as my first reference. And let's drag it about over here. And then for my other different references, I'll just select the different entities that I want in here. Just doing a bunch of left mouse clicks. And one last one. There we go. And let's get out of the ordinate dimension mode. So there I have all my different ordinate dimensions. This one automatically put in a jog because it was a little close to the other one. Let's take a look at the drawing properties. I'm going to go and click on the wrench icon over on the side. 
And these are properties that affect everything in the drawing. So for example, here I have units in precision. Right now my units are in millimeters. Here's where you can control dual dimensioning. Right now I have trailing zeros turned off. This is where you could turn it on. So even though I have precision out to two decimal places, it is not displaying trailing zeros. And I'm happy with that. Some of the other different choices that we have over here for dimensions. One I'm going to use in a moment for my chamfer dimensions. The default is length by length for non 45 degree style, but I just want to make sure that I'm in length by angle. Here you have for your annotations, you can control the fonts and the text height, and also controls over the different views, construction geometry, the formats that you're using, and also your table defaults. But I'm happy with that. We can close that out of here. On the left hand side of the screen, you have your sheets menu. And in this case over here, it's showing me here I have sheet one over here. All right, now I have some views of the crankshaft. So I've got the left view and then top, right, and section view, and also the additional isometric view. So you can see that these three views are the child views of the left view. If I want to create another sheet, I can do that from this icon. Let's collapse the sheets panel. And let's see, some other things that I want to do in here. Hey, let's create a chamfer dimension. And so in this case here, I'll choose chamfer dimension and then pick the chamfer and then what I want to use as the reference. And then I can position it over, over here and then left click for another chamfer. I'll select this one over here and then my reference. Oops, this one ended up giving me the length by length dimensions, ah, select the dimension. And then let's try the delete key on the keyboard and that will get rid of it. If I want to get the angle dimension, I'll go to the drop down and let's choose to do a line to line angular dimension. And I'll select that and that, and then get my 15 degrees out here. And that is good for that particular dimension. Okay, some other different dimensions in here. Let's see, let's see, I've got a radius dimension that I want to create. Let's go back to regular dimension mode. I can pick this entity and there I get a radius dimension and then pick this other entity. And here I have my other radius dimension that I want to create. And let's see another one that I want to have in here. I've got a bunch of different fillets in my model. Let's say I want to get a radius dimension for them. Let's go to the drop down menu. And again, I can choose that I want to create. Let's do radial dimension. I'll pick this edge over here. And here I have my radius of 10. Again, I can click on this in order to bring out the little menu and drag it out over here. And then if I want to add some additional text, I'm going to put in a space and then TYP for typical. And that way, I've documented that in there. And so the very last thing that I'm going to put in here, maybe I want to have some additional notes. You can do that from this icon. Let's click on notes and then position it over here. And for my text, I'll just start typing in notes and hit the enter key and then one. And maybe I'm going to put in my note for inspect per. And right now it's too narrow. So let's make it wider out over here in order to adjust the length and then put in what, whatever my inspection standard is and then note number two whatever I want to put in here maybe you know material etc so forth and so on and then I'm done with that note and it stays in note mode in case you want to create some other additional notes in here as well uh, one thing to note about the other different notes in here let me escape out of here here you can see that we have some other different notes in here and I'm going to double click on one of them from the notes dialog box. You can insert drawing properties. So for example, here I have drawing name and I can put that in here and then hit the check mark right now. This is called drawing one. Let's right click on the drawing tab and then choose rename and I can say instead that this is my crankshaft DWG. And that way it automatically updates with the information in here as well. And besides, in addition to having those different 
uh, properties in here. If you double click on the notes from the drop down list, you can also choose to get properties from the actual sheet itself. In this case here, it's the information for the model. And so that way I could choose, hey, let's grab the name of the model itself. And that's why we have crankshaft listed inside of there. So that is a very quick introduction to creating drawings in Onshape. I hope that you can see that. It's actually a fairly easy process, and I like a lot of the things that they do inside of here for creating your 2D production drawings. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.